This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Politrix. Politrix. Welcome to Wow What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. Reach us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. So, there might be a shutdown coming soon, but here's a person who won't be shut up or out from giving his opinion. It's great to welcome back political analyst and BS caller outer and commentator, Botsang Muilwa. Brother man, how are you doing? Welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you. Refresh and, and thanks to the viewers, the listeners, and I always say in the followers as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, ANC March, end of this week, um, EFF shut down uh, this coming week. Can we talk about those quickly? Well, I, if I was the ANC, I would actually call off the match. Uh, it's, it's irrelevant. Uh, the ANC is marching in Tswane specifically yes, against yes. the Democratic Alliance failure to manage Tswane properly in the mm, last few years. Mm. Why is the ANC doing this on a Friday, on the eve of the EFF lockdown, you know, total shutdown on Monday? It, you know, it's questionable. Number two, the DA is no longer a governing party in Tswane. Mm. The ANC could have done this protest this much against failure of service delivery and management when the, 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 the Democratic Alliance were in power, but they're no longer in power. ANC is now part of the government there. They must just fix that old mess that they claim that the DA has created. But coming to Monday, the total shutdown of the EFF. You know, I said to somebody this morning fresh, when you when you want to do a shutdown, a protest, a march, you want to have an impact either in the economy or to destabilize the normal going of people's life. So this is more like a drum majorette and like a militant you know, shut down. Uh, it was announced three months in advance, so people had enough time to prepare themselves. Uh, businesses and companies, they, they, they've prepared themselves. Mm. Another issue that I don't take this, this uh, shutdown of the EFN series is that, coincidentally, it's on a Monday, which is a school holiday, so there'll be no impact on schooling. It's, a, it's an official school holiday in the Republic on Monday because on Tuesday, as a matter of common practice, it's a public holiday. It's Sharpville Langa uh, 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 anniversary. Mm -hmm. So there's a public holiday, official one, on a Tuesday, and the shutdown is Monday. Most of the people would have taken Monday off to have a long weekend. So oh, yes. More, uh, all schools will be closed across the country on Monday. And Tuesday is a public holiday. So it all don't have much of an impact. And people are prepared for this. Companies and businesses, actually, I know of some companies that had offered their employees to say, uh, uh, take a Monday off and come to work on Tuesday. Mm. You know, and people, naturally, human beings, you will have to have a long weekend. You would rather be off on a Monday than a Tuesday. So I don't see any much of an impact. The intention and the protest, again, it's about electricity crisis and, and the way President Ramaphosa has conducted that himself. He must step down, yes. But again, the EFF is part of parliament. It's part of the people that elected President Ramaphosa into power in parliament. Now, why don't you use the parliament to can actually remove Ramaphosa from power if you want to do that? Marching and occupying the streets, I don't think it's going to have any impact. We'll wake up on Wednesday, President Ramaphosa will still be the president of the republic. But surely they would have made that statement though, whatever the statement is. Well, it will make a statement we saw in the yesteryear when almost every political party except the, 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 the ANC that time filled up the street, including the DA. We saw white people marching for the first time against President Jacob Zuma yesteryear. And, and it will make a statement. What statement? The numbers of people will be on the street. Some businesses will suffer losses for the day. But will it? do a significant change in the way the country is being run and administered? Mm. I don't think so. And I think the power of removing in a democratic state like South Africa, a sitting head of state lies with the 400 parliamentarians. It doesn't, the people on the street may protest, mm. but if we're going to shut down the country for a week, that will make an impact mm. where there'll be no movement of business. You shut down the country in a public holiday. Uh, for me, a waste of time. Noted. Let's move to the Eastern Cape. What on earth is happening at Fort Hay? There's qualification scandals, um, attempted assassinations. What on earth is happening at the University of uh, Fort Hay? And the SIU obviously are involved now investigating. 
Yeah, you, you see, what is said is that Fort Hare is an iconic university, not only for South Africa, but for the continent. Mm -hmm. Several heads of states from Africa, uh, you know, uh, graduated from Fort Hare. The Mandela's and the Sobukwe founders of liberation movements were students at Fort Hare. But this, this issue didn't start now, and certainly people have lost lives. You can see that there's an element of money involved. If people go to an extent of assassinating each other or killing each other, there should be money involved. It's not only about qualifications. But about around two years back, the president initiated a process due to complaints and those assassinations. Mm. There was a process that was initiated that the, 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 the special investigating unit must look at those assassinations at Forte. There are complaints that came up from various you know, stakeholders there to say there's fraudulent qualifications being issued and so forth. Wasn't there a minister implicated in those? Well, and, uh, as recent as uh, after the cabinet uh, reshuffle, or, you know, the new minister was, was appointed as a minister in, in, for public service and administration for that matter. Mm. His qualifications were questioned. But again, the way this story came out in the media as well, uh, I don't think the minister's office handled it well and fought her itself. I don't think they handled it well. The SIU issued a report to say, no, 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 she's not being investigated. She is just one of the many people who acquired that particular qualification, mm. like doing your postgraduate honors and your master's degree without a, a, a primary degree or qualification. Yeah, but surely that's a prerequisite. Well, there is not only that. It's there's not various. There's, other, there's, uh, there's, yes. there's, there's, there's required prior learning as well. You can have metric only, but you can have, let's say, for an example, five or to ten years working experience yes. in a similar field. It will be taken into consideration. You can have small courses that when you accumulate them, they, 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 they accumulate to, uh, you know, and you get the credits, six you, or seven in yes. credits. Yes. Uh, we don't know what is the issue in this instance, what RPL was given. To, to the minister, and I think if we can wait for the report and see what RPL did she have, and did the university, or the other, let's flip the coin, mm. did the university require or put the prospective student through the process of that RPL as well? You know, sure. uh, if, if the opportunity was presented and the university didn't make it a prerequisite, then we should look at why didn't the university mm. do that mm. itself. Uh, and, and, and people took all opportunity, and I don't want to look at the minister only, I want to look at all the people or students and such, the people who succeeded in completing those mm. courses and qualifications, are we going to go out and punish them because some professor or registrar at that university at that time was taking money? Well, was taking money or allowed them. So whether monies were taken or favors were made, we don't know. But I think the SIU report, the sooner it comes out, it will assist to restore the dignity of the University of Fort Hill. Mm. Let's talk about the Congress of the People. Um, you know, there have been quite a few challenges, uh, dismissals, resignations. Um, in fact, last week uh, when we went out, um, there was a mayor in uh, Tswane yes. um, who was not rehabilitated as a, um, what is it called? The, the financial position. Yes. The financial position. And then a certificate was provided and then he was reinstated. And then it was found that, no, the certificate uh, must have been done with the PDF uh, expert, uh, I'm told there's an app that can that uh, they, they, they must have used that they, they, they that they might uh, have used, and and then after that we're told he's resigned. Yeah, well, look, uh, times move. You know, South Africa is a land of possibilities, and things happen very fast in the country. Yes, indeed, that was the case, uh, and he apologized as well. But what was a little bit difficult with that... So what did he apologize for exactly? He apologized for misleading. First of all, he admitted that he was not rehabilitated. Okay. That certificate, he said to him, it was given to him by leaders of uh, the ruling ANC in Swane as well as... He went as far as naming them. He named them, yeah. Yes. He named those, those people in Swane, the leadership of ANC in Swane, as well as the, he mentioned some cope leaders as well. He mentioned their names. However... You know, for a person with a doctorate, he's a doctorate graduate, yes. to have listened and take face value presentation of such an important document mm. when he knew that he didn't go through that process. So he literally knew, but this is going to get a lot of people into trouble. Mm. For me, it's not only him who's in trouble. It is also the people who organize or who cooked that PDF, uh, you know, certificate. The worst and the sad part of it, afresh, is that 
you know, the judge who presided over the fake certificate is a late justice. It, yes, you yes, know, yes, they, yes. they use the, you know, that's the sad part of the story. But being from Cope now, that led to the chaos in Swani, and that's where we are today. Uh, he resigned from the position. He had to leave the position. So the council of Tswani collapsed for the third time in mm. one week. Mm. And only this week they managed to can elect a speaker. And the speaker came from ATM, another minority party. I've learned from a very reliable source that I was on my way to the studio that and we'll wake up and Tswani will have a mayor, will also come from a minority party. It's not going to come out of the EFF, mm. the ANC, or the Democratic Alliance. Sure. But, you know, most of the week, what Democratic Alliance in this instance, before we go to the COPE issue. Yes. During the voting to the speaker, or for the speaker, the Democratic Alliance de decided to instruct their members that they, sh they, they allocated them numbers. Oh, yes, because it was a secret ballot. It's a secret ballot. Ordinarily, yes. you'd put an X. No, ordinarily, you can put an X, you can put a tick, you can... But in a, in a secret ballot, only an X is admissible. No other signals are allowed. Sure. So the, the Democratic Alliance instructed their councillors to put numbers that were allocated to them. So you're so six, you must put a six. You must put a I'm six. one, I must put a one. Absolutely. And which honestly, defies, I mean, I mean, which goes against the, the very point of a secret ballot then? That's the spirit of the secret ballot yes. was absolutely defeated. They sought legal advice. I, I don't know, I, I know, I've known the DA to be very meticulous mm -hmm. in knowing processes. In this instance, that's why I call them mojos. You know, it's a secret ballot. People are not supposed to know. You tell your councillors to put numbers there. They actually completely lost mm. uh, that vote in the council. In fact, they were arguing that um, legally they're allowed to put any mark as long as it indicates a vote. But my understanding is they can put any mark, but as long as everyone is using the same mark. So if it's a six, we must all use all a six. the same, yes. If it's a mark, they elected to use yes. for that particular vote. They can, but like can't said, individualize you can't our individualize mark, because marks. it identifies people. But Absolutely. again, this was a secret ballot. People were supposed to vote in secret mm. for reasons that a uh, uh, breaking news. As I was five minutes away from the studio, three of uh, uh, ATM, DA, and COPE members are at Olive and Old Bosch police station. As we speak, laying a charge about the bribes they were promised to as, as much as one million. Shut so up. you can see how these uh, 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 political positions, they command a lot of money. Big one business. million each. Wow. And you can imagine, why would you want to put a person illegally in a position mm -hmm. on top of the salary they get? You bribe them with one million each. One was even saying, and an ATM member, and a member of Action SA was saying, he was promised one million I, yearly until his term in the council ends on top of his salary if he doesn't vote with the DA. So they're laying a charge now against those people that they will be mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the names mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. But th this is very interesting that they were promised these bribes a week ago and they come now after the defeat two days ago to get lay charges. Uh, uh, Are you saying they should have stood up as it happened? If, if you are not a corrupt person, mm -hmm. you will reject corruption up in issue. Mm. And in total, completely, mm. you you will you will also expose the potential corruptor at that particular moment. One to your political party, two to your leaders, three to the police. Now you wait a week. You didn't get the one million things when sour. I don't say I don't say molato haubuli. People can always lay charges years or months after, but it's very questionable when people. You know, by time, and when they lose elections, then they decide to say, we are going to lay charges against these uh, bribers. Can we also talk about the real cope standing up? Who is the real cope? I mean, the other day, uh, Musiwa Lekota had a, was it a press conference, as it were, um, uh, to talk about the shenanigans, that's why, Yep. Yeah. But we're also being told that, no, but that's not the official um, Cope. It wasn't the official cope. It was just Musi Walekota and his friends. And his buddy says, who is the real cope? Well, if, if there's one thing uh, in, in my career as a political analyst that has tricked me very yes. well, it's cope. Yes. That is, it, it is not coping. Uh, the, the funny thing is, remember, the cope is running with court papers and court orders. Uh, Musi Walekota is still being seen and he regards himself as the president or the leader of cope. But then we have another faction that is being led by Ntate Willi Madisha and, and the COPE spokesperson, 
uh, 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 what is the gentleman's name? He's always with with uh, uh, Willie Madish. Oh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis. Dennis yes. Bloom and yes. Dennis Bloom. And then there's a function of Mr. Lukota. Uh, and they talk different stories at uh, different I mean, I think that's what killed that organization. Despite the fact that we all know that the ANC put money to infiltrate and to break away COPE. Uh, uh, the divisions in COPE, the lack of leadership. These old people should have actually left COPE to be run by young people. They had very young people in, in COPE. You know, they had leaders uh, of the youth like uh, Anel Emda. They had people like Professor J.J. Tabani were in COPE. And those were young, energetic, and vibrant people. But the infighting of the COPE leaders has actually led the organization not to COPE. Uh, if you remember how COPE had numbers, they had over 10 uh, MPs at some stage. And now they are left with one or two MPs. And, and I don't see them coming back. And I'll tell you, why would COPE not come back? There's a lot of mushrooming political parties and breakaways from both the ANC. Since COPE was formed, then the EFF was there. Then, then after the EFF, there is the BLF, there is a, 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 a Patriotic Alliance. Then you look from the DA side, we had Action ASA being born, mm -hmm. which is also facing its own challenges, particularly yes. in Gauteng, mm -hmm. where they've been stronger after the, the, the Western Cape. And, and then we have got the Arita, I can tell you now, Arita, the former RIT forces in the ANC. That will become a political party at the end. We have Musi Maimani with his social movement, Come closer to the election, all these parties, they will register as political parties, they will contest elections, and we are going to be faced with much more and more and more uh, a coalition uh, government. And that's why the last time I said, I do not see the ANC coming back with 51% in the next election. Mm. The country must gear itself, must prepare itself for a national coalition government, which we can see in municipalities what coalitions do. Well, already we're not mature enough at the municipal level. Our, our, our politics are not at the level whereby we should be relying on coalition. Mm. I, I wish South Africans could go on a referendum or a vote whereby we limit the number of political parties. This thing of saying is democracy, everybody can do it. It's not working for us in return. You sit with a ballot but, paper. But, but how democratic is it to limit the number of parties? Look, democracy is not supposed to mean people must just do as they want. And it's, the, you can do it. Well, so, so democracy shouldn't be like being a DJ. Not everyone should be allowed to just jump in. To jump in and do as they want. Look, you, you, can, you can put a system, yeah. a system in place to say, Political parties that do not reach this threshold ah, yes. during these elections, they will not be allowed Set to a bar. Set, Set a, a bar, bar okay. of, of contesting. Now, we, we, it's an open end. Me and you, if we can get 5,000 signatures and we have money to register the, the party, I'm telling you, we're in. We can contest elections. And, and you can see now, this fragments. And again, we should be thinking on behalf of the nation. We should mm. be thinking on behalf of the state. To say It's okay to give people freedom and democracy and rights and equal opportunity. Mm. It's fine. But if it's working, that's where leadership comes in. Sure. If it's working against the benefit of the intended people, and let's lose municipalities as an example. I'm a resident of Tswani. Technically, for the last four years, I've not really had a stable mm. uh, government, local government in Swani. Mm. And services are suffering. The ANC is right when he says services are suffering. They are part of the problem. And I said, they were the leading party for many years. And, and I don't think we are matured enough like countries like India and Israel. They are the two leading coalition government democracies in the world. Mm. And I don't think we are at that level. And we have just too many. Uh, fresh, I don't know if you have seen the ballot paper of South Africa. I voted twice in my age, and, and I don't believe in elections. At some stage, I was sitting with a double-page ballot paper. Now you feel like scrambling. <laughs> they feel like closing your eyes. And because when you look Th at the... Throwing a dart. Uh, yeah. Throwing a dart and uh, made the best... Yeah, I, I don't think it's healthy for... Uh, uh, I don't also think we are already we are still a young democracy. 30 years cannot be young, guys. We are, we are, we are a maturing democracy. We are sure. no longer young. Let's talk about Action SA. Um, Action SA have had their own problems. Gauteng leader Pungani Baloi is out. Yes. And let's talk about that. Well, he, he has already been replaced. Uh, yes. These political parties don't waste time. He, had, uh, he was replaced yesterday by, by a lady in Swani, mm. in, in, in Gauteng. But again, my, my sources are saying, and this is how these political parties work. Mm. When COPE was formed, the ANC unleashed people to go and destabilize COPE. And that's how it works. 
and they did it with the EFF, they failed this money. When Action SA, uh, uh, Herman Mashawa broke away from, from, from the DA, mm. uh, uh, the DA, according to information I'm sitting with, unleashed people to go and destabilize uh, uh, Action uh, SA. And, and they will, they will the, the, the send... Trojan horse situation. Yes, yes. They, they will send very powerful people. Because if you look at Action SA, where will it draw most of its supporters or voters mm -hmm. from the Democratic Alliance? The policies are the same. The faces are the same people who led it. Uh, Mr. Herman Mashaba uh, uh, was, was, was a, is, is an astute businessman. He has mm -hmm. done very well in business. And then he went into politics. I, I'm telling you, looking at how business people, including the gentleman who just resigned now, Pongani, is a, an astute public administrator. Mm -hmm. and, and we destroy our careers by going into, into politics. Because there it's talk, it's talk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, there, there's, there's no one I may kind of a situation in politics. But I think Action SA is falling apart before it, it, it even reach its green, you know, status. It's not yet a green, it's in a building blocks. And part of it is Mr. Emin Mashaba uh, lacking political knowledge. He's not a politician. He's not that dog, that place. So, so he's not politically ripe, is what you're saying. He is not. Great businessman, but maybe not great a politician. Look, if I was Mr. Mashaba, I would have, you know, as Kellen Pema getting back into fashion, he, he should <laughs> rather go to that. But, but if you look at the caliber of Bongani, yes. and I could see, I watched that whole in a media interview of Bongani, uh, uh, the, the guy is very ripe and well matured for politics than his boss. He's been a mayor since he was 26. He, he was, and he was one of the best performing mayors the country has had. Yes, in the but he's also he's also coming from the public administration background. Mm -hmm. he, he's a public servant by profession. So he's got the balance of politics and that. And if you are a leader of a political party and you don't have those capabilities, you will find this guy riding over you. You know, he explained how he built Gauteng. Mm. And like I said, the Action 8 is, is bigger in Gauteng and the Western Cape. Mm. I mean, not actually the Action SA, in Gauteng and the Western Cape. Therefore, he was becoming too powerful. And I think it made uh, Mr. Herman Mashaba a little bit uncomfortable in having this powerhouse. I, I mean, to say to a person who have an irritable, you know, broken down relationship, yet you want to still take me and make me your spokesperson. You make me the face of the country and the mouth. Yeah, how are you trusting How are you trusting me that I will your communicate? Yes. Yeah, to them. That, that was not a clever move, but I think um, Mr. Mashaba knew that Bongani will not accept that. I think he knew that the guy is going to resign. So there's a constructive dismissal of sorts. Yeah, well, he brought him very little bit closer. Yes. He was going to frustrate him. It was going to frustrate him from being the chairperson of the... Smaller by size, but biggest province in, 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 in the country. Mm -hmm. And where they are following, it's very big after the, Western, after the Western Cape, or even better than the Western Cape, because he had to wet the ground. Mm -hmm. So he was going to manage him or even mismanage him as a spokesperson. He was going to direct him to say, these are the things you will talk about. But Bongani was not going to stand for that. And in the same breath, at the same time, they go and they dismiss they are leader or counselor in Swani Action SA because mm. they suspected, number one, that she voted with the EFF and the ANC uh, in the last, you know, vote two weeks ago, but also a very upset decision. They said she is too close to the husband and therefore she may be leaking information of the party to the husband. How can you not be close to your husband? I think the Action A, they also failed to manage that relationship. I mean, you can't say to a person you, you are too close uh, to, you have an intimate relationship with your own husband or spouse. What or kind partner. of relationship are we supposed to have? Well, what kind of relationship is supposed to be exactly? So I think they failed to manage that, but it shows how our politics are going. And if you look at all this, harassed, dismissed, or fired, suspended leaders in all the political landscape, even in the ANC, you must look at who are those people. It's younger people. Mm. And that's the threat that the older people who are comfortable in chess are having to say, these youngsters are giving us a problem. Sure. Uh, fortunately, in the ANC, we saw four former ministers and MPs resigning. I've seen people in, in, in social, on the social media saying, good riddance, they are old, but uh, they've served their time, mm. and I think they've taken their packages. We all know that they did that in order to cash their pension, you know, uh, as, as uh, political office bearers. It's very lucrative to cash that pension now, mm -hmm. uh, unlike waiting and wasting time thinking you will come back. It makes better money sense. It makes better financial position, yes. Do you think Herman Mashaba is going to eventually collapse this party 
Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because, you know, to say as a party leader, I can't trust you, almost implies that I am the party. Yeah. Because surely it's the party that should say, as a party, we feel you are not in our best interest. But the minute me as a leader make decisions that imply I am the party, surely that's a problem. I, 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 I like I said, Mr. Mashaba is a business person. Mm. He is running Action SAS if he is running black like me. Oh, I mean, Mashaba. I don't like you anymore. You must go. Yeah, I don't like you. I don't trust you. You are not delivering as if they are delivering to him. While yes. a political party, it's a collective. It has a structure. It's a structure. And yes. there are other people who were involved. I mean, listening to, to Pongani at that president, he was, he was talking about how one of the guys who is Mashaba's latent and was actually even trying to beg him to say, no, let's engage further, don't leave, we need you and so forth. But that's where Mr. Mashaba is failing. Mm -hmm. He's failing to understand that in politics, in an organization, you may be the leader, you may be the founder, but you rely on your latent hands and the ground forces, mm -hmm. those who are on the work in the ground, to can build the party. I think you ask the question, is he going to kill the party? I think Action SA is dead before it even went up. It's too fragmented. Mm -hmm before we even go to the national elections, chances of it uh, surviving with uh, Bongani and other people going to live now, it's much more of a fragmentation. Do not close the book and shut the door out for, 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 for the former DA leader, mm -hmm. uh, Musi Maimani, who is pushing the line of, you know, uh, uh, what do they call this, NGOs and, and non-political organization. I think Musi Maimani is working on a comeback to politics I, I, either way, but, but again, and this is my view and opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always put one that I'm not afraid of. What white capital has done in South Africa? And we saw, and I always tell people, they must go and look at the party of Reverend uh, uh, Meshwe. Mm -hmm. the, the report on the funding of the party. Do you know that uh, Patrice Mutsipe and, and Cyril Rabaposa are some of the funders mm -hmm. of Reverend Meshwe's party? Now, what white capital does is... In order to weaken political parties that they do not like or do not trust, they will start funding everybody. So this mushrooming political parties, you must ask yourself, where do they get the money from? Mm. The guys in Stellenbosch are giving Mashaba money. They are also giving uh, 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 EFF money. They will deny it. But now with the reporting, they will have to disclose the funds. Mm. You understand? Even if they don't give them directly, Stellenbosch may give me 10 million to give to my political party and I will donate it to my political party as a donation from Bhutan mm. and not from Stellenbosch or from White Capital. And they will do that if they believe that the political party they find one, it will destabilize that party, especially local and provincial government. It will take care of their own interests. They are doing it in municipalities. So fragmenting these political parties and having a lot of mushrooming, it weakens the major ones. Mm. And the major ones being weakened, it means we do not actually have a ruling party or a government in South Africa. We have people who listen to the capitalists who fund their political parties. And that is the status, unfortunately, we find ourselves mm. in. That's why old hardcore liberation movement parties like Asapo and the PAC, they will never make it because the white capital will not fund them. Mm. And that's why they are struggling to make it because this politics is about money. It's about buying votes. It's about buying elections. It's about funding the campaign towards the elections. So it is money, money, money. Democracy is about money. And, and if you do not have money in the so-called Western democracies, you will not make it. I mean, you look at the U.S. elections, we are going in that road. One, one last example with this, ask yourself, in this damn age of technology, mm -hmm. people are talking of four IRs and so forth. Why are people still queuing and voting with ink mm -hmm. when we can actually sit and vote? This youth, they do not want to go to elections. Tell the youth you can vote from your smartphone. Sure. You will see the numbers of voters increasing the count. Why are we not voting? Brazil, uh, the last time I checked, had 196 million inhabitants. Mm. One of the biggest democracies. In Brazil, voting happens live and online. Nobody goes to queue. And those who do not have access to data, Wi-Fi, and technology, the government makes provision for them to can do that. But as fresh vote, in Brazil, people can see numbers changing live on TV screens mm -hmm. instead of waiting for a ballot paper. Then they get stolen. Then the DA messes them up. Then you understand. And and why are we still doing that? It's a sign of how we can buy 
and and cause fraudulent processes. So we, we are a country that is leading with technology. Sure. We have been pushing the 4IR. Why are we still voting with the ballot paper? I mean, uh, the same biometrics that we have at Home Affairs is a database that could be used um, for the voters' role. Absolutely. And, and, a, and a database that uh, under, under Dr. Nkondla, Nkondla, I mean, Zuma, mm. it proved that it worked. Today you apply for your passport, less than six days you have it. You're on the system. You understand? You're on the system. It is there. Why don't we upgrade that? So we we'll link it to the IEC sure. and use the same system as our voting system. Yeah, Bolsang votes once and he's done. And he's done. I'm, I can sit in the comfort of my couch, I, I, then I decide to vote at any time of the day. But they don't want that. You know what is the excuse? No, there's a hacking can be hacked. Why don't we hack banks? Why don't we hack? You know, the, 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 you know, the, the banks are safe, risk. home affairs database is safe. It's a, but there is the same risk analysis mm. that the government apply in banks, the reserve bank, the printing of money, printing of passports and IDs. Why don't we apply the same risk containment measures towards the elections? I'm telling you, if South Africa can go digital in two voting, we can increase by double mm. the number of voters. Sometimes people qualify to vote and they wake up and they kiss longer and they're like, ah, man, I'm not going there, I'm not mm -hmm. going to vote. And we are losing on that. Those are some of the things we should be looking at at the moment. We are running out of time. Let's go regional quickly. Um, uh, this week saw presidents of Botswana and the DRC standing up against De Beers, the G diamond giant, and Macron of uh, France, respectively. Let's touch on that quickly. Well, uh, which one should I do first? You know, I like the regional politics yes. much more, much more interesting for this platform. And I've seen a lot of your followers, mm -hmm. they like that we talk about regional and Yes, sir. Geopolitics. Let's start far. Let's go to the DRC first. Yeah, uh, the DRC. Well, that's a short one. That's another nice one, like Namibia last week, where President Chisesekedi of, 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 of the Democratic Republic of Congo was in a press conference being visited by uh, President Macron of, of France. But what happened there shortly first to our uh, followers and viewers. Before that, the, the, the foreign minister of France had visited Africa and he made a statement that was uncalled for. He spoke like, uh, you know, same old story, a typical colonialist. When we go to Africa, we expect to see the lions and the buffaloes and wildlife. We don't expect to see infrastructure as well as technology and so forth. And that Eric president security of, of the DRC. So when the, 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 the two presidents met, Mr. Macron tried to actually blame a journalist to say, no, 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 it was not my foreign minister who said that. Uh, it was a journalist. But the president of the DRC put his foot down. He told President Macron that they should respect uh, Africa. We are no longer puppets. The same way as the Namibian president did, you know. And I'm happy that these African leaders are taking a stand now against the former colonizers, uh, uh, especially in the name of France. France is, is the worst colonizer after after the British, you know, and, and I think he took a stand. Uh, that was a little bit embarrassing for Macron. If you look at that video, he tried to, to maneuver out of that problem, but I think thumbs up to the president of the DRC. And, and every week we hope that our presidents in Africa, they will give us a lot of meat to can chow this, this uh, 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 imperialist and uh, neo-colonizers. Now, the real story for us this week is the president Masisi of Botswana, the people of Botswana, the cabinet of Botswana, taking a resolution mm. challenging the 1966 agreement with the PS that uh, it has been enough now. Botswana has been getting 51%. There's a written agreement that for all the rough, and this is where the catch is, the agreement that Botswana had with the BS in 19, or after 1966 independence was that they should continue mining in Botswana and they will give the people of Botswana through its government 51% of the revenue derived from uh, mining diamonds. But let me tell you where Botswana made a mistake. Mm. It was for rough diamonds, uncut, yes. and polished diamonds, which the value of an uncut diamond is almost a quarter of the value of a final product, polished mm -hmm. diamonds. Now, President Masisi woke up and said, that's not only the problem that you are giving us little money and some have been sneaked out. Some, they even lie about the revenue. No, no, so, yeah, some are not and declared. They can't trace them. That was not the only problem. Part of the agreement with DBS that was signed by uh, the founding president, uh, Kama, yes. of Botswana, was that DBS and the former colonizer, UK, they will take Botswana and upskill them in, in, in mining diamonds, cutting diamonds, and polishing diamonds. That was part of the deal. That's why a number of Botswana students, they will go to countries like the UK, US, Canada, and Australia to go and study. But you know what happened? They did not train 
this Botswana student in the field of mining mm. and geology mm. and cutting and polishing diamonds. They did not. They went there to study things like agriculture, accounting, politics, and everything else except the intended peoples. Mm. So they actually even did not deliver. And I don't know why it took three presidents in between President Kama one and President Masisi, there were three presidents in mm. between. There was mm. another Kama and others. So I don't know why it took them for President Masisi to stand up and say, we don't want 51% of uncut diamonds anymore. If we take, we must increase the percentage, but we must also look at the diamonds that are finished diamonds. The revenue from a finished product and thumbs up to Botswana. I think we are getting closer to home. I see South Africa in future when we have a proper brave government and leaders to do what Botswana is doing, mm. to put into agreement. You see, there's a problem with a negotiated political settlement. You enter into agreements with a former colonial master. The colonial master does not adhere to the agreement. They did it with Zimbabwe, the Lancaster clause. They did it in Botswana. They did it with us. If you look at the Codesa and Hoteskir negotiations and minutes, and, and they are not abiding to the agreement. Mm. And our leaders, they take many years to can say, but you are not abiding to the agreement that we had. But I think Botswana must put its foot down. If the BS does not want to come to the table uh, to terms, let them pack and go. Those diamond belongs to Botswana. And, and I don't think countries like China and Russia will sit and fold their arms when there's an opportunity to can legally mine diamonds in Botswana and, and more than half of the share must go to the people of Botswana. And, and I think it helps that you now have, for instance, the Lukara Diamond Corporation uh, saying, we are willing to compete against you. We might not be able to go against you uh, scale-wise. Exactly. But we are a player in the game now. It's, you know, the market is now wider open. Yes. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the old timers, in the same as, as in South Africa, the old timers like DPS, they've got challenges now. There's much more companies that are prepared to get mined out diamond. Effectively, they are in the market. They know what to do. And even they're prepared to give a little bit more percentage to the natural indigenous owners of those mines who are Botswana people, then let it be. Mm. That, that's the sacrifice that countries should go into. You, if you go into an economic battle, you must be prepared for losses at some stage in order to recoup much more at a later stage. Botswana may be sacrificing now. They may be losing a number of diamonds and revenue in the meantime if DBS pulls out. I doubt if DBS will pull out. They can't afford to pull out. They can't afford to pull out. The, the loss is going to be too big mm. for them. You know, there was, a, there was a mining conference in Cape Town about five, six years ago, and one of the mining uh, 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 boss and make me uh, arrogantly when they complained, Botswana complained about this transaction, stood up and said, What if Botswana was sleeping? What can we do? They were sleeping mm. when those men. I mean, that was a very arrogant statement mm. at that time. They did not deny that DBS has been stealing more diamonds in Botswana than recorded. Mm. It's just that Botswana government trusted them and, 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 and you know, they, they entered into the deal in good faith. And now I can care a person stands up and say, for all these years they were sleeping and we mined more and it's their loss. It's not, I would it's have not, chucked not our them. fault. This I thing. would have chucked them out of my country at that particular mm -hmm. moment. I would have done what Kagame is doing and then what the leaders in Burkina Faso are doing with all these foreign economic mercenaries, as I always label them. Busang, we are out of time, sir. Uh, but if people want to engage you um, at a social media level or book you for a talk, uh, where do we find you? Well, as always, at Botang M uh, is my handler uh, for, for Facebook. If you Google Botang, we are on Facebook, on Twitter, as well as on uh, Instagram. It's uh, Botang M, or just put Botang Mira, and uh, then I can reach my, my, my telephone numbers and email are public. They are also on those. Uh, 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 what you call social media handles. We have a shutdown uh, this coming Monday. Are you going to work? Well, uh, this is my work at the moment. I am not going to work <laughs> because I'm unemployed at the moment, but uh, I was not going to take chances if I had to go to work. Uh, look, I'm focusing on the Sharpville Day. Being a Pan-Africanist, the Sharpville Langa Day is much more important. And, and I think that's my focus this, this, this week. What I'm going to do, I've uh, uh, grouped up a number of uh, youth mm -hmm. from various political parties around. So and we are having a discussion about Sobukwe and what actually happened towards the Sharpville Langa Day. Because people look at it only as Sharpville. Mm -hmm. they, are not, they don't know that actually 
uh, uh, this happened in Langa and spread all over the country. Mm. Now I'll be actually talking about how political leaders at that time, 1960, 1961 to 63, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have landline phones, but they managed to organize a protest the countrywide under the watchful eye of the apartheid regime police. So I'm having that discussion on Tuesday with a number of youth in Tswani. So uh, are we able to be a part of it? Are we able to tune in somewhere? Well, uh, no, well, it, it was not going to go live. You are actually giving me an idea. No, you maybe, need to go live. Maybe I should talk to one of the youth. You can, we, can, we, can, we can use equipment to can go live. You have to stream discussion. it live. It, it can't be a private discussion. That, that's an idea that you have given me, but we can talk about it after. But that's my forecast for this weekend, uh, the, the, the Shapvin Langa Day and the anniversary. It should be a lesson that our kids must actually know what happened mm. that day. It was not just shooting of people who were protesting against past. There was a bigger campaign mm. that led to the birth of Porto and then APLA, then MK and the exiled and people going to jail. But it's a very important lecture I'm having on Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, lovers of all things uh, political, Botsang Mui Lua. Wow, what a week. Um, thank you for tuning in. As always, we appreciate all of your feedback. Uh, you can find us on uh, social media at wow, W-A-W, what a week. Uh, shout out to uh, the cast and the crew at Amped Studio. Shout out Africa Podcast Network. Pezulu Works for all the cinematography. Our audio engineer, creative artist, the Flo Fraser. And uh, creative director. Director Kuvesh Mohan and show producer Kelezo Mudisa King. You can email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. This is. Wow! What a week! What a week!